fast forward a little bit for when the children get a bit older, just to see why this is so important, um, because it's a tiny part of a huge jigsaw. Uh, we've seen in the last year the biggest ever rise in, in child abuse, in um, grooming, for example. And if our boys and girls grow up and in school, we don't challenge these kind of sexist language. And boys are told, man up, grow up hair, don't cry, boys don't cry. It's very, very damaging for them. And, and abusers later on, potentially in life, or bullies in school, or people they walk past on the way home to on, on the way home from school, will also use this fear. And fear is the biggest weapon that abusers have. And if boys are told, boys aren't afraid, boys don't get scared, boys don't talk about their feelings, then where are they going to go when they are afraid? They are afraid. What I think we are doing here now is dissecting language in the most clinical form and then creating a generation of wallflower kids who are literally listening for an offence. Um, I go to schools and I lecture in schools and I talk to the kids. Could you imagine if I went to her school and said, good morning, guys? I mean, it is getting to the point where we are losing a grip here. We need to be looking at the context of language. And that's what I'll be teaching my children. Things said in a certain way, in different contexts, mean totally different things. To say good morning, guys, is if you're actually seriously picking that apart, then I feel that perhaps your energy is in the wrong place. It really, we should be teaching the kids context of language and how to use a, a language that is non-offensive in, in a context. If you take something out of a context and dissect all the bits and pieces, you'll find yourself in, in a black hole.